If you guys are looking to set up a Google Sales Max performance campaign and you're wondering what is so different about this campaign and setting everything up, well, you found the right video. Because in this video, I'm gonna break down exactly how to set up a Google Sales Max performance campaign for your business. Let's get into it. All right, so a Google Sales Max performance campaign is a relatively new Google campaign that is basically a culmination of YouTube search, display, discover, Gmail, and all the search partners. And so it's a way to consolidate all of these different advertising campaigns into one campaign with the only goal being to generate sales. And if you guys stay to the end, I'm actually running one for my e-commerce store right now and we'll break down the data up to this point so that you guys know what to expect with your campaign. But let's not wait any further. Let's get into exactly how to set up a campaign. So with any campaign, first step is just sign into Google and I hope you already have an account. And I also hope you already have a merchant account set up. If you don't, I highly recommend going, creating a Google Merchant account, linking it to your Shopify, WooCommerce, or whatever platform you use, and that way you can get all of your products to show up for the shopping aspect of your Google Ads campaign. So you'll already see that I do have a Sales Max Performance campaign set up, but for the purpose of this video, before we get into that campaign, I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to set up the campaign, and then we'll review the data in just a few minutes. So we're gonna get to the new campaign settings. It's clear, we know we have our sales, our leads, website traffic, brand consideration. So we wanna do sales, gonna do a purchase conversion. And from here, we're, we have the options, as you guys all know, to go search, display, shopping, video, discovery. What we're gonna click on today is the new Performance Max. So as I mentioned, merchant account needs to be set up. So this is where you're gonna connect it, campaign name. We'll do a sales Performance Max 2 because we already have the one. If you guys are finding this video useful, give me a thumbs up and let's get back into it. Now from here, basically my experience, I started at $20 a day budget. I increased it to a $30 a day budget and not much happened. So what we're gonna do is a $50 a day campaign and let's see what that does. Now, when it comes to the bidding, we're gonna have a couple of different options. We either have conversions or conversion value. Conversion value meaning basically the return on ad spend. Now here's again where things get a little bit weird because initially I had it set at a 4X or 400% conversion value, but because the campaign is new and the merchant account was relatively new, there wasn't much history. So I had to switch it from a conversion value to a conversion goal. Basically, trying to get as many purchases as I possibly can, period. Doesn't matter how much it costs me per purchase, I just want to get those purchases coming in so that I have the history and the data to say, okay, now I wanna do a 3X ROAS, now I wanna do a three and a half. Slowly increasing that, instead of just telling Google, hey, I want a 4X ROAS, there wasn't enough data yet to get me that 4X. So we switch it to conversions. If you're a new campaign, you don't necessarily wanna do a target cost per action, unless you know historically exactly how much your product costs and your net margins to establish a cost per action. If you're just starting out and you're just testing this new campaign, I don't recommend clicking that just yet. Next. Super simple, straightforward, select the region you want advertising. For us, I only want to sell in the United States at the moment, so we're gonna test the United States. If you click on more settings, you're gonna see where you have the ability to test your schedule, expansions, all of these different things. We're gonna hit next just for lack of time here. And here are the asset groups. So asset groups are going to essentially be your products plus your interests and audiences. So this is where things initially when I was testing this got a little bit weird because I was trying to understand how to set all this up. If you guys are sick of Google ads, make sure to check out my latest video right here all about scaling Facebook ads vertically and horizontally. Make sure to check that out. Let's get back into Sales Max. Asset groups, we're gonna do beard products because that's what we sell is beard products. Expansion URL. Finding a URL is going to be the home page. Now here's where things get interesting, is what it's going to do is show you the best experience based on the data 
for your images, videos, headlines, and it will tell you which ones are performing best. So with that, you wanna upload as many different assets as you have. So we're literally gonna go across the board, we're gonna select all of these, and I'll show you the data from the existing campaign in a little bit. Select your logo, videos, Savage Man Grooming, YouTube channel, all three of our videos, headlines for lack of better time. Of course, when it comes to your headlines, you're gonna to wanna to get a little bit more creative than what I'm doing right here, but again, in the essence of time, I'm just trying to show you how to set everything up. Long headlines. This is a long headline. Savage Man Grooming is the best all natural beard products available on the market. So as I'm writing these out, you can clearly see all of the different options and how your ad is going to look across all platforms. So here's YouTube. We have our YouTube video. This is a long headline. Gmail, you're gonna see the Gmail ad that will be appearing once you get your asset group completed. For the search ads, here are our dynamic search ads, display, and discover ads. So you're gonna to start to see all of these are a culmination of all of Google's ad products in this one campaign. Now here's where things got interesting for me because initially I didn't set an audience signal, but then I did because what I found is just doing a $50 a day budget with no audience by allowing Google to just do no audience signals and trying to find the people who are most likely to convert did not work. And because I found that probably the budget wasn't high enough to just say, hey, here's a whole bunch of money, Google, figure out who's going to convert, I started adding interest. So I did a beard interest. And what this was, was basically different demographics of people who were most likely going to convert. Then additionally, I'm not gonna show you guys, but I did some competitive research. I found the competitors who were big competitors, you can imagine who they are if you have a beard, and I used those as audience insights. So if, once you have everything set up, you simply hit next. Now, here's the site link extensions. If you guys have run search ads, you know exactly about site link extensions, call out extensions, call extensions, and we can't approve this ad because we didn't submit everything properly. So let's go back to my campaign. Great data so far, zero cost per conversion because there haven't been any. But here are the interesting insights that I've been able to gain. So once we get into the asset groups, you're able to click view details and this is going to show you the basic performance of your current ads. And this is where things get a little bit weird because you can't customize columns like you can on a search ad or a video ad. You have to work within the restrictions of these asset groups. Now you'll see performance is still learning on some of these, but our creative assets in our headlines and descriptions are now being broken apart by good, best, pending. And you'll see here are headlines, good, best, good, best, Good. As we go down here, you'll see that they're still pending on a number of different images. Our video ads, good, good, and best. And so you're able to start tracking which creative assets are performing best, meaning click through rates, cost per clicks, etc. Obviously, still without a conversion value associated with them. If you guys are interested in learning more about Google Ads specifically related to e-commerce and lead generation, make sure to hit this video where I break down exactly how to make sure your keywords aren't competing with each other. Click the link, watch that video, and let's get back into the Sales Max performance campaign. So as we start to think creatively, what are the videos that are performing best? Well, this is gonna tell us relatively easy in terms of which ones we should create more of. Now, unfortunately, we still do not have any purchases, but those will start to come. Like I said, this is just a test. Here are impressions, basic metrics based on which ones are performing best, but there isn't much control we have on bidding, increasing a manual cost per click, or much of anything. So we are truly relying on Google to find the people who are going to convert and then convert higher. Now, as more data comes in, make sure to subscribe because I will make another follow-up video on how to set up and scale a Performance Max campaign. That is, if Google finds people who are gonna purchase. If not, we're gonna turn this off, go back to 
shopping ads and search ads with a manual cost per click bidding strategy to ensure that the business remains profitable. If you guys have any questions about how to set up a sales max performance campaign, any questions on how to add assets, connect merchant centers, anything, let me know in the comments and I will make sure to respond to you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Brief overview of how to set up a sales max performance campaign. And honestly, I might just increase the budget even more, but we'll see. Let's get some purchases coming through first. I hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe for more digital marketing, e-commerce, lead generation information. Hit that like button if you guys enjoyed and we'll see you next week.